What's that? I asked it because I don't see your iPad or iPhone out, and usually you have it out because you have notes, and I usually wing it, but you don't have it out, so I'm wondering if you're winging it tonight, too. I'm mostly winging it. All right, let's get ready for some shit. Two guys, one podcast. I'm one guy. Yeah, because I'm sucking the American <laughs> teat without pulling my own weight, huh? Two guys, one podcast. And I'm the other. I think it was freeloading commie fascist killjoy. Oh, that's right. I forgot freeloading. Two guys, one podcast. Finding out that I would have been the fastest woman in 1972 made me feel a little better. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. I feel honored. You feel honored? Uh, talk to, to me. Let's talk to me for a minute there. Uh, it's kind of cool to be in the show. I mean, this is really weird. Like, this is this is kind of the setup that I figured you had from all your <laughs> all the episodes of Frasier you watched or something. <laughs> this is exactly what it is. <laughs> no, this is just exactly how I picture you guys on the show. Like, this is legitimately like, the setup. Um, who was somebody was telling us about? Oh, uh, our mutual friend. Was talking about like how he imagined us recording, and he was like, "Yeah, I kind of, I don't know, I kind of thought it was a whole different thing. Like, I don't know why he, yeah, imagined. but he doesn't, he didn't like it. He no, won't, he won't come on the show again. Oh yeah, that it was like this. Really? Yeah. Is that what it? No, I think he just didn't like hearing his voice. Like, I think he, he didn't like the, like the idea of being on the show. He didn't enjoy that. One. He always said he wanted to be like a correspondent character, not an actual." An actual character on the show. Like news in Libya today. <laughs> Just um, like a reporter on the other end of the uh, the telegram. I'm stuffing my face for a minute. Like he just does a call-in recording for like the Dow Jones or something. Stock market today up two points. Dude, you know what I watched today, by the way? What? Space Camp. Space Camp. Dude, Space Camp is the shit. Yeah. I haven't seen that movie in like fucking 15 years or something. Like <laughs> oh my God. Is that the where the is that the one where the kids go to like fucking Alabama and then they accidentally get sent to space or yes. something? Yes, yeah, it's fucking, it's fucking epic. retarded, is what dude, it is. No, it's, it's Leah not. Thompson. Ah, oh, dude. And Joaquin Phoenix is in it as like a little kid. Leah Thompson's in that movie. Yes. Joaquin Phoenix is one of the kids that goes to space yes. too. That's crazy. I know. I did. I mean, I'm telling you, I haven't seen it in like 15 years. All right. Now you want to watch it, don't you? I do. Mostly, I want to shove these fries in my face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest. <laughs> oh, good God. I haven't had fast food in forever, man. I had to swear it off for so many different things that I just kind of lost taste for it. But it's like crack, man. Uh, Did you see the South Park episode of Cartman selling the KFC buckets? Mm. Like on the black market? He's like selling all the KFC buckets because it's been outlawed in South Park. And so he starts pulling the skin off the chicken and chopping it up and snorting it and i feel like i feel like that's what i'll devolve to at some point if i go back to fast food nice. i'm gonna start shoving mcdonald's fries up my nose dude i'd be there to help you <laughs> you'd be there shoving it up my nose yeah <laughs> i'm glad i have an enabler in my life as fervent have this fried fat you skinny fuck <laughs> 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 That's right. Make it even for the rest of us. Come on. <laughs> Level the playing field. I got a milkshake imminent coming up next, fool. <laughs> <laughs> I would not be pleasant. I just need a fat drip IV. Did you know you can sign up for the Arby's injection? Like, what? Like Arby's roast beef has no flavor to it. Like the way it's processed, it has no flavor. Okay. And so whenever it gets to stores... They have to inject Arby's flavor into their roast beef. And you can buy Arby's flavor, supposedly. So you could inject that stuff into, like, tofu and make epic tofu. Yeah, but I don't like Arby's. Well, fair enough. I mean, if you dug Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> that information is useless to me. <laughs> You're still eating, but. We can get started. I don't have uh, a lot to say anyway. <laughs> 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 That's fucking funny. All right, here we go. You ready? I was born ready. I know. I've been waiting for that. You missed it last week. The last couple of weeks, I don't think I heard that, so it was nice. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I am the other. And this is the podcast. Uh, and we are joined this week 
uh, yet another guest. Had so much fun a couple of weeks ago with the MHR. We brought in the littlest sensei. <laughs> what up, man? Uh, what's happening, dude? <laughs> no way. There's no trumpets or, or claps here. Just There's no audience. Like it's a little dry. Later, though. We are very millions. excited you're here. There's just, <laughs> nothing, there's just nothing to let you know. It's okay. Fair uh, enough. We used to have a little, we need to keep the party thing in here. The, <laughs> the party <guy>. favor? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a kazoo. If only, if only, if only I had <laughs> brought it by my kingdom for a kazoo. How are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic, man. So, <clears throat> I was I was thinking about how to phrase, you know, like who you are for us, and and you are you are literally you are the son of one of our college professors. That's that's the short end of it. Yes, that's yeah. literally like what I am. And we've known you since you were like. Ten, a child, eight. Since I was eight, was it really since I was yeah. eight? I, you were, you were eight the day that I met you. We've got, we got to see you grow up, man. Like, oh, he can smoke now. Oh, he can drink now. <laughs> I decided what it is. Is it's, it's like, you know, it's like that younger brother, the way younger brother, like <laughs> mom and dad have the accident after you're already grown, and for a minute you're really excited because you're like, oh, it's cute, a baby, and then you're like, fuck the baby, they get all the attention and all the money, and I'm over here to do my homework, fuck you, what doesn't the baby do his goddamn homework? You know, and then and then eventually you're like, yeah, 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 he's cute, he's cute, he's fucking, oh, look at him, he can put a whole sentence together, Jesus Christ, I'm do, I'm writing ten page papers over here, you know what I mean? And then you go off to college and you develop a little, a little removed from that, and then all of a sudden you come back and boom, there's like a grown man there where there used to be a kid. I feel I, like we groomed a drinking buddy. Yeah, that's, we kind of raised our buddy. <laughs> that, that's, that's literally been like one of my favorite descriptions of like our relationship. Yeah. We groomed our drinking buddy. <laughs> I like that one. And I got to say, like, I literally appreciate it because, like, I mean, if I had to describe, like, what you guys are to me, like, I would have to say that you guys are totally like these older brothers that I've discovered in this second portion of my life who <laughs> who have taught me so much about, like, doing things in, like, a way that does not come off as, like, a stupid dumbass or anything like that. <laughs> like, that's important. Like, I don't look like a dumb shit. I like that you've chosen it. It's like this, like... You know, back in the day when you were like eight or nine, like you didn't get a choice to hang out with us. Like you were around. It's like, so go, you know, go hang out with them and <laughs> they'll keep you safe. Right. Like babysit my and, child. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's and, what that shit was. <laughs> yeah. And now it's, and now it's, oh, hey, can I want to hang out with the guys who kept me safe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. It it is nice to have you in. We've talked about you several times on the show. Uh, we've uh, we've never had we've got this whole like backlog of people who say they'd like to join us, but we just never can record with them. So anyway, it was nice to hit a little space where you had some free time and could come into the studio. Super Thanks for badass. hanging out. First off, I broke a little news on you back at the house when we were on our way up here to the studio, and it, it seemed you hadn't heard it. So I'll I'll tell you, it's going to matter much less to the other guy. Because he is not initiated. Most things do, by the way. The news, less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <that's> fair enough. <laughs> the news today, oh, he's, I think he's mostly just saying that I care an awful lot. <laughs> mostly about trivial <laughs> shit. Um, <laughs> okay. uh, the news broke today that Disney has purchased Lucasfilm for $4 billion. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? One film? <laughs> no, Lucasfilm, all of them. They bought the studio. They bought the entire properties. They bought, like they bought Marvel, they bought Lucasfilm for So they $4 have all their backlogs, dollars. all the royalties from past movies that go to them now. Everything. Okay. They own Star Wars. They, oh, they own... The fucking Ewoks. They own Red Tails for what it's worth. They own, uh, I don't, Indiana Jones not because that's a Paramount project or whatever. Right. So that's a, a different deal. Although I think they'll have some sort of stake in the ancillary money from from uh, Indiana Jones as well. What was it? Willow? Fuck, I don't, for what that's worth, they got Willow too, you know, that's a and huge American Graffiti. Of shit. What? Star Wars, though, is the big one. And here's the headline. And I, I watched a video today with George Lucas and Kathleen Kennedy, which he, he, she's the like the she's his second in command at Lucasfilm right now and has been for a few years. She takes over officially, first off, as she is now the president of Lucasfilm. Kathleen Kennedy is. She's been there for 
I think at least a decade or so. But she's going to be the president now. She'll report directly to Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney. And other than that, she won't have any bosses. She will be the the, the president of, of Lucasfilm and the shepherd of the Star Wars brand. That will largely be her job. And they are moving ahead right away. George already has story treatments for 7, 8, and 9, episodes 7, 8, and 9, and it's expected to be in theaters, episode 7, by 2015. Spring 2015, there will be new Star Wars in movie theaters from fresh minds and fresh voices. I could not be more excited. So is it going to be a continuation? Uh, Yeah, that's the idea. At least this trilogy will be a continuation of the original series. Now... George talked about it today in the little video clip that I saw, and it was mentioned in the press conference too. Of course, there is this gigantic ancillary universe that you can fill into. They already have with That's true. with video games and with books and with. I mean, and you've read some of the books over the years, haven't you? Some of the Star Wars books. Nope, you've never read a single Star Wars. book? I don't read bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> So hold up. There's comic books. There's yeah. there's there's books. There's been radio dramas. There's all this other stuff. So do you think they'll fill in with that? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think you get seven, eight, nine. That's actually tied. And then if those are even remotely successful, or even if they're not, you, you're gonna get eventually Knights of the Old Republic in Dude, live action. Be, oh, that would be so awesome. You're gonna get the Thrawn trilogy down the road. Maybe you're gonna get. Maybe that's what they're gonna make. Even I, I think that they're. Here's what I'm most excited about. Star Wars can now become like James Bond in that there can be good Star Wars movies, there can be great Star Wars movies, there can be okay Star Wars movies, there can be some bad ones even, but the property can go through different voices and different eras and it can change and it can reflect and it can grow and expand. And the fact that it can do all of that with Lucas on board and with his blessing and in his lifetime as opposed to us. I thought that that would all happen when he died. His children would take it over and they'd be like, to honor the legacy how of many, my dad. How many, how many of the James Bond movies have you seen? <clears throat> have you made it all? Have you seen all of them? I'm pretty sure I've seen all of them. I don't know for a fact that I've seen all of the Roger Moore. Roger Moore is my least favorite, I think. So like, he's the one I connected with the least. Like, I don't know for a fact that I've seen every moment of Octopussy, for instance. Uh I've seen all the Roger, da- uh, the uh, all of the Timothy Daltons. Okay, so you know, seen all the Sean Connerys. So you know I've how you George feel Lazenby. about. So you know how you feel about Octopussy, right? That's how I feel about all of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I know, which is why I'm really excited that the Lilith Sensei was going to be on the show for this because he, I know, is at least a little bit of a Star Wars guy. Well, good. It's good to know who the catalyst is for this waste of airspace right now. <laughs> what? Well, hey, you. look. So here's the thing. It's like, big news. You're you're an investor in in media companies that are going to be. You're an investor in companies that are going to be affected by this. This is a gig, This is a tidal wave move in the business and entertainment industry. It's going to mean a lot more Star Wars. I mean, that's the. They stated it today. They said the plan is a new Star Wars film in theaters every two to three years from here on out. It's like any other franchise. It's Batman. I have, it's I have James never Bond. wanted the Mayans to be right so bad before in my life. <laughs> Dude, that could. Well. <laughs> <laughs> it could be an amazing thing or it could be a terrible thing. Like, it could totally, like be this crazy commentary that becomes this voice and says all of the things that we needed to say or it could just become this shit pile that we all just kind of throw money at for the next few years but here's i think the if you look at what who's in charge of disney first of all that's the thing to it's bob Iger, yes but who's in who's in charge of all their creative product john laster everything has john laster's fingers on it now since the 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 buyout of Pixar, but what really happened is Pixar bought Disney. I mean, that's what effectively happened. John Laster runs the place now. And because of that, you you look at what's happened with the transition of Marvel. Everybody was worried with with the Mouse House buying up Marvel, and they were like, oh, is it going to dilute? They're just going to make, you know, these shitty products. Everything's going to be on a pillow, and who cares? And they're going to make terrible cartoons. And it's not. What happened is Disney knows how to use a franchise to its maximum uh, capability. And so if anything, I think we're going to get more satisfying Star Wars stories on a more regular basis. Like before we were relying on the genius of one man, which I think the prequel series already shows might have been used up a generation ago. <laughs> so like now, 
it's going to be a group of people who all love the product like we do and who all yeah. love the story and the universe like we do. And they're going to be helping to shepherd a new generation of creative voices to come in and tell it at different levels. Yeah, I think this means that we'll get the live action TV series eventually in some form. I think we'll get more products like the Cartoon Network. Have you seen the trailer for the the funny short series or whatever that's going to mm -hmm. be on Cartoon Network? It's like Star Trek trailers or Star Trek diversions or something like that. Star Trek detours, I think, is maybe the call the the, the name of it. But it's or Star Wars detours, excuse me. Um, but it's like it's the robot chicken guys, and it's like oh, literally badass. like five minute yeah. little funny segments. It's Seth MacFarlane type jokes, right? Set in the Star Wars universe, and it's whole. It's a whole series of that. That never would have happened ten years ago because of the stranglehold that George Lucas had on the idea in the universe. And I'm saying yeah. this is the final step that he needed to do. And the fact that he did it while he was still alive, I'm really excited about. Well, I mean, he couldn't actually do it when he was dead. Well, yeah, but I, I assumed <laughs> that it would happen. I assumed that his kids would go, and here's this gift to the world. Now let us reap in the billions that will come. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, they're not so much going, here's the gift. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm saying <laughs> we're cashing in on daddy's paycheck. But – so I was excited when I was thinking all of those things. I'm I'm excited because I'm a fan of what's happening at Disney right now. I'm excited because I love Star Wars and I'm very excited about new new Star Wars movies. Those were all selfish things. I'm sitting at home though and I'm watching this video with Lucas and all of a sudden it occurs to me because of 2015 I start doing math. I'm gonna have. I said on Facebook I think I had a like a like a seven and a five year old. I think I'm actually I think it's gonna be like a six and an eight year old. Either way, when the next Star Wars movie hits, my kids will be, my two sons will be the perfect age to go fucking ape shit over it. Thank like, God, <laughs> thank God they have an uncle other guy to stop that shit from happening. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, like they are going to be full on fucking Jedi crazy by that time, dude. They're going to be so And when they're 16, up. they're going to be full on Jedi ass kicked. <clears throat> no, man, it's, it's, it's a whole geek culture now. Like it's safe to be geeky. You can carry your lightsaber and beat the shit out of people. No. No, you can't. <laughs> uh, Uncle Littlest Sensei will teach them how to beat people's ass with that lightsaber, I will for real. I will teach them the ways. That's right. There you go. And you two just make it harder for me to teach them the ways of women. Dude. That's... <laughs> Dude. I think the Littlest Sensei does just fine with the ladies. <laughs> uh, and, and Honey Bun would make a good argument for me, too. Mrs. Little is sensei. You're, yeah, yeah, but I would, I would, Mrs. I would, Mrs. I would Mrs. argue, sensei. I would argue I'm that you two fan. are specifics, while I am more general. Like we're wait, what do you mean? We're only good with specific kinds of women. Yeah, your that's niche important markets. too, dude. A niche market is huge. If you hey, got a niche market, hey, like, sure you're thing, solid. Sam Adams. I'm just telling you, <laughs> Budweiser is the king of beers, <laughs> and I don't give a fuck about the taste because I don't like any of it. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Did you just say you don't like to uh, eat pussy? Is that what you just, just said? Happening. No, I said I don't like to drink Budweiser. <laughs> I thought or we were Sam still talking. We were talking in euphemisms. Yeah, I thought we were talking. Yeah, about pussy you guys for a are Sam Adams. I am Budweiser, and, and I don't, don't like, like the, the taste, taste of any of it. That's right. That's that's yeah, the quote. That's, exactly that's what the it was. quote that we're going to loop and turn into a dance track. <laughs> and I don't like the taste of any of it. <laughs> I'm the other guy. I'm the other guy. I don't like the taste of any of it. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> no, it's awesome. It's awesome. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about The Walking Dead. Oh, shit, yeah. It's a great show. We all agree on that. Yes. We're all on board there. And we're not. I don't want to talk specifics necessarily. Like We don't need to get into spoilers or anything. So people, if you're not exactly caught up, don't freak out about that. What I do want to talk about, though, is this. This is appointment television for me, and I don't have many, that, but like The Walking Dead, I have to see within 24 hours of it having aired, or I like I get nervous. <laughs> like I need to see it. Like somebody might spoil that episode for me. Not that it's going to be spoiled, but just that I really need, like it's available, so I need to have it in my brain. It's such good entertainment, I can't let it be out there in the universe and me not to have consumed it already. I need it right away. I, I get that. My problem, though, is this. More and more, this show is getting to the point where 
it's not even something I can watch. It's now just like a radio drama for me. I sit in my living room with my eyes closed and listen to The Walking Dead every week. It's so fucking gory, and I you am so it? I'm so oh, weak stomach. But he's yeah, he's such a pussy when it comes. to <laughs> that. <laughs> That's what it is. Ah, oh, dude. I'm a I am a tremendous pussy. Dude, I suppose. even if it's a noise that is still off stage, he will look away even if they don't show anything, just because he heard that noise and something may be about to show up. Well, especially well, it's not like it's not like I'll look away because I hear a zombie. I'll look away because I hear someone stabbing guts or like breaking apart a skull or something. I do. I, the ushy gushy noises in that show are too fucking much for me. They. I don't have nightmares because mm-hmm. I, I barely dream. Uh, like, I fall asleep and, and I sleep like the dead until I wake in the morning. But if I was a guy that had nightmares, I think I, w- I would lay awake at, at night thinking about the sounds in The Walking Dead. Dude, here's the thing, though. you got to appreciate it on a totally different level, though. Like, it's literally some of the best of its kind, like, of, like, the gory stuff and, like, that crazy kind of, uh, bleh. The, the sound effects the sound effects and also like all the makeup and like the imagery of it like it's all so good like you should watch it just as like an artist try it that way <laughs> well, I mean, maybe try it that way I agree that it's at the top it's it's at the tops in it's field as far as like it's pushing the level of what you can do in a television show especially you know as far as like mutilation goes well not yeah. just like violence and and mutilation but Literally, the storylines that you can can reach and discuss in a TV show, I think, are being pushed by what The Walking Dead does on occasion. I, who would have ever thought that we could do a show where a woman just cuts open a car, uh, uh, open a woman's lady parts? Pretty sure that'd be ER. I, did they do that? I mean, I guess so. Yeah, they did like births and things. Never do a dead person though, because <laughs> yeah. dead people don't have babies. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I would say that totally kind of pushes the envelope in a crazy way. So, but you guys don't have a problem with this, is what, I, is what I'm hearing. No. I don't have a problem with it. I actually really appreciate it. I mean, like, I think it's really gory, and I don't think, like, exposure to, like, I don't know. If you can't handle it, don't watch it. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's badass. I think it does a really good job at what it does, if that makes sense. I don't know why you're looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> Are y'all waiting for me to say something negative about it? No, I wanted. I don't know. I was. I, I was. I was. I was waiting for a final thought or something. Something. Dude, did you, like for half this conversation, I was out of the room <laughs> getting another soda. Oh, you left? Oh, yeah. I don't have a clue about half of what y'all were talking about. It's Walking Dead. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> we were talking about it. It was. It was. Uh, it's pushed the envelope, and it's in the in the television field in particular. Yeah, but I think most of that comes from. HBO haven't done it and, and won a bunch of awards for some of their shows that pushed the envelope. With Game of Thrones in particular, I'm assuming? Well, I mean, uh, No, not even that. I mean, if you look at Sopranos or if you look at, you know, any of those shows, Deadwood. Yeah, some Deadwood. So and I think because of Dude. those shows, those are the shows that really push the envelope. Because now, like, Walking Dead, it's like, oh, it's not on HBO, Showtime, or Cinemax. That's the only difference to me. When you talk about pushing the envelope, that it's not on those channels. That it's not on those channels because it's not, it's not any worse than than series that have been done before. Fair enough. Do you have a word of the day, sir? Yes. <laughs> Man, we talk so much without going to it, though. I know that's all right. All right, I'll give you a choice between two: cry face or body booking. Hmm. Cry face or body booking. Uh, I want to lean body booking, but that might just be because I want to hear the definition. I think I know what cry face is. Little of sensei? I want to go with body booking. All right, body booking. Here we go. <laughs> body booking. Someone who is constantly posting pictures on Facebook of themselves in swimsuits and <laughs> workout clothes to show everyone how hot they are. Also paired with constant status update about fruits, vegetables, juicing, working out, going to Whole Foods, and posting articles about those topics. This generally annoys the shit out of others, and there are never any comments on the post except for the person's significant other. Oh, hey, S slash O is significant other. Uh, huh. Except for the person's significant other, who is equally obsessed 
and annoying. Yeah, I don't really have anybody in my news feed that body books much. I got a few people. Yeah, I bet you do. Yeah. You know the right you know the people that are ripe for body booking. <laughs> <laughs> like ripe for body booking? <laughs> I guess so. Well, I mean like you know a lot of uh, early 20s single already fit people. Yeah. Have you guys seen anything about all this CrossFit stuff? CrossFit? Yeah. Why did you move like, his mic? Now I got to recheck whether it's Because no. he wasn't talking into it. Whoa. No, that's fine. That's I, it's we you put it where it was then, but I want to just make sure that it's I now I got to put my things on to make sure that I can hear him as all Holy Christ. Doing. What? Don't, what? <laughs> There's no reason to take the Lord's name in vain, sir. I didn't. I specifically said holy. <laughs> holy. <laughs> holy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, speak. <laughs> speak. Speak. I'm trying to speak. What was the G, like that G doesn't stand for Jesus you guys were talking about earlier? <laughs> oh, what was that? We were, just making, we were just making fun of stupid people. Fair enough. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> that G don't stand for Jesus. <laughs> so... <laughs> It was just nonsense. Something yeah, that we've been doing nonsense. for the past couple of wait. Let's explain what of the day. I know he's. Oh my bad. Show. Yes. So here's the deal. body booking is the word of the day. Okay. You have to try to use that word seamlessly into the conversation. Okay. If you're the first one to do it, you win. And by seamlessly, he really means you can shoehorn it in there in whatever <laughs> way that you can. <laughs> if it fits, right. it fits. If it yeah. fits, you got it. Yeah. As long okay. as as long as you can remotely. I mean, if it if if. If it literally, well, if you say it, pretty much we're gonna. Unless we're it doesn't make sense. You. Okay. He's he's stretched but if you can it. squirm it in he's there. He's stretched it a few times. Okay. Never. I of course Never, have sir. always done it completely. You've always on the up gotten and up it in there. appropriately okay, with a proper usage I see that. in context. Always. <laughs> um, so the past couple of weeks we've been doing as part of our "Who Are These Guys" segment, mm-hmm. uh, the answers to James Lipton's questions from inside the actor's studio and this is how lazy we are we actually know these questions come from someone else that james lipton is getting them from james lipton has the class to say who that person is we don't have the class to even give a fuck to look it up I have not looked <laughs> it up I haven't. we've gone over these i'd like to get your opinion on them since you also are a, are a thespian okay what is your favorite word other guy really likes foible i like boondoggle it's not my favorite word my point is, I think for a favorite word, it has to be one that you actually use often in conversation. And how often do I really get to say boondoggle? Or foible. Yeah. I guess please would be my normal everyday <laughs> word. I love Your please. favorite please. word? Yeah. Please. I like to hear it. I like to say it. Because mm. it has it, it covers literally every situation. You can use please in any situation. You must love please please me then, huh? The Beatles song? <laughs> yeah, but not just that. Think about it. like, like if you're, if you're like captured by like a terrorist, right? And like fucking beating the shit out of you. Please is appropriate there too. Please stop. <laughs> like, it, like it works. Please, please, please feed me. Please. But then also, I mean, it works for everything. Nice. There's never a reason not to say please. <laughs> Now I'm gonna really I'm trying really hard to think of a place not to say please. There's not there's not there's really not one. Politeness is always appropriate. <laughs> Politeness is always appropriate. That's true. That's very well, I don't know that that's true. Sometimes I think you can well It might not work. Doesn't mean it's not appropriate. Gandhi would agree with you. Like like please stop bashing my head in with your boot, right? <laughs> that might not be the answer. It might not work, but it's worth <laughs> a try. <laughs> It's a solid shot is what it is. I think my favorite word would have to be, well, maybe like, I really like apropos. Apropos. Like as as a word. Maybe not necessarily like how it's used, but like, I like the musicality of the word. Yeah, I like that word too. Uh, the P-R-O-P is so rare. I also like that there's the silent S on the end. Right. I like the silent S. I don't like the use of silent letters. <laughs> I know it's a trick, ain't it? Gets confusing when you're writing. <laughs> Possum begins with a P. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. That is a that is the most useless use I've, of a letter ever. I'd forgotten. I'd forgotten that it's an opossum. Yeah, I've but written, it's not. I've written possum 
a couple of times in the past couple of days, I actually and, and you and haven't been used, wrong. No, I've at least used where the we pee. are. Is the is the is the P? Dude, do you know where we are? Have you met the people here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have a street named Vienna. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's after the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite curse word? Fuck. Like, hands down. Fuck is like... Dude, it's literally the most versatile. I use it the most. It's the um, pleas of cuss words. It's <laughs> it's the pleas of cuss words. You're like, fucking stop kicking me in the head with your boot. <laughs> Works just as well as please stop kicking me in the head with the boot. <laughs> please fucking stop kicking me in the head. That's a shoot. If that doesn't work, you're fucked. You're boned. Ah, you fucked. <laughs> uh, I like it. I like it. Um, I prefer horse shit. Horse shit? Yeah. But horse shit is like something specific. Like, I know. I know. I like the well, specifics of it. Here's what I realized. Uh, other guy visualizes everything that we say. Anything that he hears, he sees mentally in his head to process, apparently. So any curse <laughs> words, if you if you say cocksucker, for instance. Somebody's sucking a dick in my somebody head. Somebody is sucking somebody. a dick in his head. And He's oddly enough, and oddly enough, cocksucker is specifically a dude sucking a dick. Yeah, what's up with that? Why do you jump right to in homosexuality? In my head, that's how I always see it. I, to me, that says more about him than it says about anybody else. <laughs> I mean, isn't that what they say? Uh, my mom called me a fucktard one time. <laughs> fucktard? Yeah. That's real love right there. When the, when a mom can throw down the fucktard on you, you yeah. know. So what do you picture when I say fucktard? I'm interested. A retarded vagina. <laughs> <laughs> like, not the not the woman around it, just, just a cartoon Vagina. <laughs> That's real fucked up. It's a little misshapen. Yeah, it's a, a fucked hard jawed. I'd hit it. <laughs> <laughs> what what sound or noise do you love? Uh I really have come to love like this is so sappy and so hipster. It really is. Uh I really love like hearing my hammock swing. It's so lame. I would no, make, but it's not douchebag. It is very it is. hippie. It is it's very, very hippie. I love hearing my hammock swing. Yeah. <laughs> like I know, right? When you say it like that, like when where I, where did I put my sandals? <laughs> ah, like it really sucks. But like it's terrible. Like it's something that I legitimately love. But I realize how like douche nozzled it sounds. What sound or noise do you hate? Oh. Anytime the hammock stops swinging. <laughs> <laughs> the absence of hammock noise. The ripping. Uh, <laughs> nails. Nails on a on a fucking chalkboard. Like it's uh it's the most fucking hideous sound in the goddamn world. I can't believe nobody's ever mentioned that before. Doesn't I say me. nobody. We've uh, there's only, we've only oh, given dude. like three other people a shot at this. Doesn't bother me. Really? They don't bother you? Mm-hmm. You don't get like I, it makes my hair stand on end, too. Dude, it like, makes I my can't nails handle. itch, like, just thinking about it. I don't know that it makes my oh, nails itch. Man. I do know that, like, I like I get anxious when I think someone's about to do it. You know what sound I, I really like and am a, I mean, it's, you know, I, fuck it, I don't care. I love hearing myself poop. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, like, is, do you gauge do you the sounds of your splashes? It's just sounds are you talking about the sounds of your anus, or are you talking about the sounds of splashing? The or whole, the whole, or the, whole the whole, the whole experience of taking a dump to me is in, is joyful. Dude, I'll give it to you. Like it is rather sacred. I pooped twice in the <laughs> because, same day. Here's the thing. Here's the thing is <laughs> last week. It was epic. It was awesome. Dude, I pooped four times in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Other guy, <laughs> other guy is on a different level, sir. As far as, a different level as far as of poop. pooping, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I do, and, and here's the thing: is because the sound of pooping, literally, is if done calming? correctly, public bathrooms have ruined this. But I don't really use public bathrooms, right? The sound of pooping is like, man, that's for you. <laughs> it's special. Like no one else, no Poops one else should hear that noise but you, <laughs> and it's yours. Like that's a noise. That is one noise you can like. That is a noise you completely own. It is, I'll say this about the pooping. It is one of my favorite things about living alone. And it's one of the reasons why I don't, like, I don't think I want to get married again. In and the it's future. even better when you leave the door open, isn't it? Oh, it's great. I get, not only do I leave the door open, I get naked before I go to the bathroom. Oh, dude, if I'm the best. Lock the door, strip down, walk their butt ass naked. If it's early enough shit. in the morning, I just don't put clothes back <laughs> on. <laughs> 
<laughs> I like to take a shit and then shower afterwards. Like, <laughs> I knew, th- I knew as soon as I said that, I knew shave, as soon man. as soon as I said it, I knew this is how the conversation was going to go, and Look, I almost didn't want to say it because of that. You can't open up the door to, to how enjoyable shitting can be and not expect two guys. I just to, to chime I, in too. I just really <laughs> wanted to say that I enjoyed the sound of pooping of my pooping, and then I wanted us to just. Kind of <laughs> to just move right on by it, yeah. no, moving right along. Doodaloop, doodaloop. No. And now we have fifteen minutes of poop. We don't have fifteen minutes of poop. We got maybe five minutes of poop. We've got a very small section in the middle that has to deal with poop. And getting your poop on is important. Getting your poop on is very important. Get your poop on. Get Imagine poop if you on. did. You poop. I feel you, like every you. five episodes we run into this issue. <laughs> Talking about poop. No, like we had the <laughs> masturbation you. episode. Then we talked about masturbation is really special too. <laughs> I thought I don't I like agree. the sounds associated with it at all. Um, but you like shitting? I like the sounds. Of shitting, but not masturbation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there aren't very many good sounds in masturbation. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Auditory, audibly, it's not a good experience. I mean, it's just really heavy breathing. <laughs> Put your headphones on. <laughs> get, you, get you some good music going. Yeah. Uh, you know, porn. I've never done that. Yeah. <laughs> I like how we try to keep it like classy, and he throws in porn at the end. Dude, because that's what yeah, it dude. Is. Put on some music, light some candles. Uh, porn. <laughs> well, he makes a fair point. Listen to someone more attractive, to heavy breathing. You know, I mean, at least like let's be real, or less I mean, attractive if that's your thing, <laughs> or less attractive if that's your thing. That's right. Hey, look, everybody's got a kink. Um, two more questions for you. Okay. Little list and say what, what profession up? other than your own, and of course you are you are a student, but you are you have you have worked professionally as an actor and as a a stage combatant and as a, uh, a choreographer, a fight choreographer and a, a fight captain, et cetera, et cetera. What profession other than stage and or screen? So take away show business. What other profession would you enjoy? Do you think? Uh, I would totally want to go into advocacy work. Uh, I would want to. I would probably go get a law degree and I don't know partner. And then like work like this for the Southern Poverty Law Group or something like uh, charity work dude, or something. I don't know if I'd do Southern Poverty Law Group, um, <clears throat> but some something similar to that. I'm pretty disappointed. Why? Why? I, uh, my, for a second there before you answered, I thought he was going to say the same thing I did. What'd you say? Like a wilderness na- nature guide, not like oh hey come hike with me, but I want to take people on like hunting trips and. And fishing trips and things like that. See, I totally dig that kind of stuff. Like, I do a whole, like, um, like survivalist training definitely, like, interests me. But, like, I don't think that's something that, like, that would have to remain, like, a recreation for me. Like, I would want to keep that sacred and, like, away from work. Like, doing, like, work and stuff like that, I would have to be, I would, I would get, like, a real, I would get a job job, you know? I would want to put on a suit and, like, go to work. Fuck I would want to go from one extreme to the other. Like, like right now I'm, like, hmm. a gypsy lifestyle supposedly like i want to go and like direct fights and do all that fun stuff um but if i couldn't do that i would literally have to go the opposite extreme i feel like get in an office yeah i don't know why that is i mm. all right final question what up if there is a heaven yo and if there is a god <laughs> and if you can go there okay so what would you like ifs. <laughs> what would you like? We're out on a very far theological limb here. Right. <laughs> True enough. Okay. What would you like God to say when you get there? Hmm. I would want to hear God getting like irately pissed. Like he's just mad at like Buddha or something like that motherfucker won't stop body booking. I'm tired of looking at them titties <laughs> and fat belly. <laughs> 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 Dude, that was a long way to go. That was a long way to go. That's a theological limb right there. That's a good win, though. I, I'll give you, I'll give you props on that one. And That's of course, nice. I'm, man, I'm super stoked. I picked Buddha to be body booking too, because you know he's always, god damn it, with a big belly and stuff. I like that. Man, shit! I was gonna do it about our trip. I, was I couldn't let it get that trip. far. Yeah, nah, that's, that's good thinking. <laughs> That's good thinking. Damn. Damn. Uh, so, back to you, sir. You're in the presence of the deity. I'm in the presence of the deity. I mean, not now. We're important, but we're not right. that important. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, probably there's weed and pizza on the mountaintop. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what I would want God to say. 
<laughs> ding 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 ding! We've got a winner. We've got a winner. Matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, that's a show. So here's what folks should do if you're listening to the show and you think, "What is this thing that's coming to my earlobes?" And how can I get more of it? Um, you should go to two guys one pod dot com. All written out. Two guys one pod dot com. No numbers, etc. Uh, you can listen to all of the old podcasts there. You can subscribe to us on iTunes. You can even support us by shopping through our Amazon or iTunes links. Hit the you know, I've, button at the top. I've bought two things from Amazon myself. Have you really? Yeah. That's awesome. I didn't use our code. You didn't? No. You shithead. I forget every time. I bookmarked it for myself. Because that's like a discount. Yeah. Really. That's exactly what it yeah. is. It's like giving ourselves a discount. It's kind of a nice little deal there. And now I know how Amazon has lost $243 million. <laughs> you and me didn't shop that much. Um, anyway, you can do that. You can watch videos there, which, by the way, we're not like imminently going to have new videos, but I have come up with a new plan that I'm, I'm going to experiment on a new kind of video for Two Guys, One Pod. When, when season two of the Two Guys, One Pod videos return, I, it may be very, very different. I'm very excited about this. More details coming soon. What, What's a season for us? For videos? No, for podcasts. I, I, This would probably be a season. This is episode 26. That's about a season of podcasts, I think. It's half a year. You know, I mean, if we were going to take a hiatus, this would be when to take a hiatus. We're not going to take a hiatus. But if we were, this would be when. I think. So we're going to... We should we should record right before we go on vacation, and then record immediately after the vacation. Yes, yeah. yes. And so we'll have an episode that it goes out like while we are there, and then we'll have one when we when we come. I mean, like we'll, we'll have, have a new one. We'll have expectations meets reality. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. What do you what do you expect <laughs> on it? Girls back. in coconut bras and pineapple drinks. <laughs> I didn't expect nearly so much sand in my ass crack. <laughs> so what'd you what'd you find in Cancun? Oh, the fucking sun, sand. man. The fucking sun. Lots of crabs. Lots of crabs. <laughs> and not all the kind on the beach. <laughs> mm. Crawling all up on This you. gonna get cut or honey bun gonna be pissed. <laughs> I'm in the sheets. I wasn't what do you why do you immediately go to me fucking around? <laughs> I tend to not get crabs from the sheets. <laughs> not that I've ever had crabs, so I don't tend to get it from anywhere. I'm just saying, I'm almost positive I slept, you know, in a bed of someone who, who, who is suspect. Wait, you've slept in crabby sheets before? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm just saying, in my travels, I'm sure that's a possibility. <laughs> oh, son, I have... I have been all over the world. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen many things. Look, I've slept in some nice hotels. <laughs> I've, I've slept in fucking dumps, man. In some shitholes too, huh? All right. Well, I don't think, <clears throat> I don't think there's going to be crabby sheets. So I don't think that's going to be a problem for us either way. We should not take ocean view then. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole different kind of crab. I'm fine with those kinds of crabs. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> Well so anyway, lots of stuff happening <laughs> at twoguysonepod.com. You can find us on Facebook, too, facebook.com uh, slash twoguysonepod. Email us, twoguysonepod at me.com. Or um, you could just come be on the show like our good friend, the littlest sensei. Yeah. What up, dude? Thank you, for, uh, thank you for coming in and hanging out with us. Dude, thanks for having me, man. So uh, now we do this little sign-off here, and we'll put you into that as well. Uh, I'm one guy. And I am the other. And you are... The Littlest Sensei. And this has been the podcast. There's a late night diner On the south side of town girls on Fridays should never hang around But the lady two seats over is sitting there crying all alone If she's here at this hour must be hell on her at home I'm not trying to know your business I'm not trying to change your life It
cost a lot to love somebody And I know because I had to pay the in there that i'm gonna clip out uh so we're like yeah but 40. it's all poop it's not poop no, that's what i'm clipping poop. out is mostly poop Why? i'm i'm saying i'm okay. not clipping out most of the poop i'm gonna clip out sections of the poop and i'm gonna okay. clip out saying his name i'm gonna clip out you know whatever a couple of things here and there i'm gonna drop in some of the funny chit chat at the beginning and at the end for the for the little extra jokes or whatever some of the punchline stuff goes in it's it's whiz bangery is what it is sir. it's whiz bangery <laughs> i don't think whiz bangery is a word I don't think it is either. Whiz bangery is your version of smoke and mirrors. <laughs> yes, it's all whiz bangery and smoke and mirrors and and, and poop and circumstance. 